thank you chorus team i am randeer singh from a research team of novama wealth and management we welcome you all all participant and management team we have with us uh, senior management team of insecticide india limited mr rajesh agarwal managing director and mr sandeep agarwal chief financial officer of the company i now hand over uh, the call to the management team for his opening remarks and before the q and a session starts over to you sir Thank you. My name is Rajesh Agarwal. I am joined by the CFO, Mr. Sandeep Agarwal, who will explain the results later. First of all, I discuss about the industry situation and also about IL, IL strategy, yeah. and the impact of the current scenario. So we'll discuss that and the opportunities, of course. So let me start with the industry first. So during the COVID times, the prices of all the chemicals shot up because of the huge demand which was visible across the world. and post covid the scenario started reversing the prices has started coming down which we had seen post diwali in the previous year uh, and it had a very bad impact on our quarterly performance as well in the fourth quarter in particular but uh, 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 today if you look at today's scenario we can say that the prices have bottomed and the prices have stabilized at uh, uh, at a level which is almost uh, uh, a very low level and uh, they are bound to bounce up from here so this looks like the scenario but if you look at the world market still there is crisis in usa in latin america also in europe because of the drought condition and it is said that all the people are holding lot of inventory because there the distributor size is also large and at the same time the companies also are holding lot of uh, high price inventory which is creating trouble in that area If we talk about the other geographies of the world, particularly Asia, African countries, and the Middle East, a lot of countries are facing the trouble of currency because of uh, the non-availability of dollar and the decline of their currency. So that is a type of problem there. But if we look at Asia, Asia is relatively in a better shape because it received good rainfall during the high uh, season, and so is the condition of India. India also was very, very reasonably moderate, or uh, I would say. Uh, uh good uh, climatic situation particularly in the kharif season but as we are approaching towards the rabi season there has been more drought type of opposition which has uh, resulted in the decline in the sales or overall demand of the agrochemicals because uh, uh, there is a crop holiday uh, of paddy in karnataka in telangana also in some parts of andhra uh, chili crop is not being good some other crops are uh filling due to lack of monsoon or availability of water so uh, this has been the situation but overall if we see the majority of business for the industry particularly in certified delivery happens in the kharif season because we do 60 to 65% business in kharif season and about 40% business in the rabi season which means first half is 60% second half is 40% and we do more of natural sales where we are not doing aggressive placements in advance and we in the Move to the market near the season because our strategy is such that we work with the distributor and we try to book the orders from him. And by the time he is booking the orders, we start working with the retailer. And when the retailer placement starts, we work with the farmer. So we ensure that our material has a demand all the time, and it is uh, there is a pull from the market, which means that the good returns are minimum and the placements are good. And we sell near the season only. We do don't do advance placements, which uh, results sometimes uh, people feel that our Q2 performance is little lower side. But we maintain that actually. We generally only uh, uh, work more on export sales and B2B sales in Q4. And uh, but wherever is the demand or where whatever advance placements are possible in the advance areas, we definitely work in Q4. And I see. The Q4 also is going to be a positive factor uh, in the coming season. So, talking about the inventories, the inventories this time are the low price inventories because all the purchases which have happened in the previous three four months are the uh, low price purchases. So, this is going to be more profitable for the company in the future, and I believe that the prices are started moving northwards uh, or they have stabilized. So, the market is going to be. Reasonably okay. So now, if I talk about our strengths of IEN, so I would say distribution is the 
the strength of our uh, company where we are focusing about around the star products because uh, uh, i have told many times that we have divided our range into marat mas and focus marat mas so focus marat mas strategy has turned out very well where we have uh, made uh, some super star products and we are focusing around these products and these products are becoming big brands so that has come as a big advantage and here i would also tell you like to talk about our reach and distribution because our distributor network now is working with us for two to three generations actually and they are uh, attached with us uh, in a big way and uh, also we are getting very very good response from the retailers and farmers due to regular introduction of innovative products that is very very important because we get good reach good distribution and uh, the advantage is coming because of launch of new technology products because we are doing regular innovations and we are trying to launch these products through our r&d centers through our technical collaboration and also we are making new mixtures and new formulations which is helping us a lot to explain it in detail uh, i'm not though i'm not going in detail but still i would say that we are focusing around herbicide and today we are lucky that we could bag our registrations around all the leading uh, crops where we need the herbicide and our products are doing very well first of all to start with chemi in swabin our hachiman which is a japanese uh, mixture basically is doing very well if i talk about corn we had launched tori last year a great success we received in tori and now we are launching super tori and torex which means the entire spectrum of uh, corn or maize crop we have with these two products actually and we have we will have all the solutions so none of the customer will have the chance to move out anywhere similarly if i talk about tori our green level is very very popular and also we have green mix and last year we had introduced green export so we were very late in introduction only south part of the country has seen it and this year i believe that these all these products have been introduced in the wheat crop also we have introduced million uh, this was a trial launch very successful launch and similarly in sugar cane we had nakshatra very detailed launch so all these products are bound to grow in a big way in this year talking about the insecticide we have introduced silva with nissan just last year means uh, 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 this was the second this is the running second year last year we got half season and last year we could do about 70 odd crores of gross sales and this year we are already about uh, touch about 150 crores of gross sales and it is uh, happening regularly so i believe the next sale of shilva would be touching about 150 crores making it the biggest product in our portfolio similarly this year we had brought mission mission we have given two formulations sc and grenus so both these uh, formulations were very well accepted by the market and the gross sale we could do in half year is roughly about 80 crores so a very good success we received from this product also and similarly our herculus brand is also moving in a market in a big way and very very popular across the country neither in central part of the country and south india and uh, it is increasing sales year by year and dominant of our upcoming insecticide which was long three years back is also bound to increase this year similarly if i talk about fungicide it this pack is led by pulsar we introduced tgp so look on success in the first year but i believe that we will improve our strategy and we are going to concentrate around tgp and also sofia so this will give us a big spectrum and big leap so i am very very confident friends that by launching these new products and focusing around some of the key products because these key products act as the engines for our growth and since we have the products in all the segments and we are launching new chemistry new mixtures also along with some of the new products we are for which we will be manufacturing technicals because we have done expansions across plants so panti expansion is fully operational dahej we are going to start partially because some approvals are still awaited and in this quarter i am quite confident that will be fully operational that the head site will be fully operational and we have started working on paper on sotanala so the final plans are very near to finish and we will make a 18 month program to start this plant also so once we do the ground breaking ceremony so this will be also quite fast and this will help us or support us in consolidating our manufacturing activity between rajasthan and gujarat which are the key areas actually and uh, we will be near to market so many advantages are going to come here regarding our expansion i would also like to point out that uh, in the hills 
this expansion is going to give us raw metal security because we are going to be less of that integration at one time. And at the same time, we are we are introduce many new molecules also from the age. So most of the new herbicides which are we, we are introducing are going to come from the age, apart from one or two insecticides also. And major insecticides are going to come from the party plant. So uh, both these uh, technical facilities are going to give good returns actually in the coming year. So here I would like to tell you friends that we are focusing on team building also. Our marketing, our strategy team, manufacturing team, R&D team. So wherever we are finding the gaps or wherever I think that we can strengthen the team, we are strengthening the team and it is not only the team that at the top level also, we are strengthening our board also. So the two members, very senior members, uh, uh, seasoned professionals have joined our board already and we are also looking for further strengthening our board. So the idea is it is a very holistic approach that wherever is the gap, so we should have the best experts from the industry in our team. So we are focusing around that. And when we are focusing on the brands too much and we are doing the, getting a good image in the market, this is also helping us in B2B sales as well as international sales because the advantage which comes from the brand market because, because of your uh, uh, brand image, you get good uh, 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 acceptance in the B2B segment also. So B2B segment also is growing. And I see that this, uh, as the situation settles down, we should be able to get some more registrations also in the international markets, and we should get that advantage also. So our uh, all the three segments, B2C, B2B, and international business, are bound to grow uh, uh, reasonably. Uh, and uh, here, I would also highlight one factor, which is digitization and uh, our system of internal controls. So... We have made a program named as II360, which is to for the last mile connectivity. Here we are trying to connect with the retailers, also with the farmers. And major movement between the retailer and the farmer is done by the uh, team, which is uh, called uh, CS or crop advisors. So these crop advisors are generally on third party role, so they don't get covered by our uh, uh, ERP, uh, which is SAR. So all these retailers and farmers are not covered by my accounting program, so they are out and we are not in regular touch as a company with them. But this IL360 will make the two-way communication much faster, much easier, and we'll be able to spread the entire information about our new, the new launches, about our schemes, about our products, about the solutions we are going to give, because I believe consumer needs the good solution, and if the company is able to bring the solutions, then definitely these solutions, nobody can stop becoming a big brand. So, friends, uh, to sum up, I would like to say that India has a good opportunity and I see a good demand. And with our production, which is excelled now, so a good consumption is accept- expected out of this industry. And I see the growth, uh, a positive growth, which is coming in the next year also. And this year also, we should close with a decent uh, growth. Uh, this quarter has been really settled. Uh, so uh, uh, we were not able to uh, grow in a big way, but still, I am happy that we could grow the bottom line, and we expect that uh, this growth will continue in both the top line and bottom line in this year and the years to come. With this, I thank you very much, and I will require the CFO to deliver the results. Yeah, thank you, thank you, MD sir. So myself, Sandeep Agarwal, CFO of Enterprise at India Limited. So let me share some key highlights of the results. So in quarter three, average 24, our net revenue stood at around 3,580 million, which was marginally up from 3,565 million in quarter three last year. Notably, our premium product line, which is Maharatna or uh, Focus Maharatna, which demonstrated robust growth of around 14% in, the, in our segment. So we witnessed a significant improvement in EBITDA also, including other income, which increased by around 11.84% during the quarter 3 of 24. The EBITDA reaches at around 260 million as compared to 232.57 million in last year quarter 3. Our profitability also showed commendable growth with a remarkable around 31.41% increase in profit after tax during quarter 3 of 24 totaling at around 123.07 million in contrast to 93.66 million in quarter 3 last year. 
in the first nine months of February 24. Our net revenue experienced a healthy growth of around 13%, reaching at rupees 16,938 million as compared to 14,994 million in the same period of February 23. Despite market challenges, we achieved a modest 2.28% growth in EBITDA, totaling at around 1535.92 million during the first nine months of February 24, as compared to 1501.64 million in first nine months of February 23. Our profitability remained resilient with 2.26% growth in profit after tax during first nine months, amounting to 946 million as compared to 925 million in February 23. So our premium product line, Maharatna, demonstrated a significant growth, making a remarkable 30% increase in constituting 62% of the total net revenue in nine months of FY24, up from 54% in nine months in FY23. If, let me share some category-wise breakup also. Uh, for the year-on-year -year comparison of FY, uh, quarter three, FY24, the insecticides uh, has increased from 45% to 52%. The share of herbicide 43 to 35%. Fungicide 8% to 9%. And uh, biological and PG around 4%. And uh, share uh, for the first nine months, the share of insecticide was uh, 44% last year, 43% this year. Uh, the herbicide 42%, uh, which has come down 34%. Fungi said it increased from 10% to 20%. If you will see the segment wise sales, B2C is at the same level of around 78%, B2B 16%, 18% to 16%, and exports in the last uh, third quarter is 4% to 6%. You will see the nine month comparison. The B2C sales are 72% last year, 70% this year for the first nine months, B2B 25% to 26% and export 3% to 4%. And Maharatna product, if you'll see, in FY23 last year, it was 47%, and 53% was the other products. In FY24, in this quarter, it is 53%, and 47% the other products. In first nine months, the Maharatna contribution for the last year was 54%, and other products 46%. And this, uh, in FY24, first nine months, the Maharatna contribution is around 62%, and rest are 38%. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I got disconnection, but now I'm online. So now we can start question and answer session one. Sure, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We take the first question from the line of Deepak Pawar from Vasuki India Fund. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, Deepak, sir, your line is in the talk mode. Please go ahead with your question. Hello, Mr. Deepak, can you hear me? Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, sir, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, my question is that we have achieved 15% uh, growth in the Mahantrakna products. Uh, can you name uh, the top ones which we, we got a good growth into? Uh, they are the same products which I have explained because we have growth in Focus Maratna. Focus Maratna has given us a big jump. So all these new products which we had launched in the previous 3-4 years, they have supported us a lot. And if I talk about the older product, it is green level. So the three key products which has given us a jump is uh, Shinwa, uh, Hachiman, Tori, Mission. So these are the four key products followed by Green Label and Hercules. Green Label and uh, Hercules. Uh, and uh, Kanachi, that's what you said, right? 
Uh, yes, uh, there are a lot of which are positive progress basically, and these are all from our focus Maratna range. The good part is that focus Maratna has grown over 50% actually in the previous year. So that was the vision. We wanted to do, do that, and very successfully we are able to deliver that to the market because we made these products our engines and uh, uh, very well accepted across the country, I can say. Right. Uh, secondly, sir, currently we hold a, a, a decent number of uh, dealers and distributors uh, network. Uh, what are our plans to increase that? And uh, is there any uh, you know certain number of dealers that we can we target to achieve going forward? It's a regular exercise that wherever we find a gap, we wish to grow and we wish to expand. So we keep on doing it regularly. At the moment, now we have about 8,500 running distributors. So this has increased over a period of time. So we have not made an announcement, but there are over 8,500 accounts, number one. Number two, on the retailer aspect, we have started mapping the retailers, and we are mapping the retailers. Because so far, because they are not covered by my accounting program, but through CRM, we are we have tied up with uh, Salesforce. And with Salesforce, we have made this CRM, where we will be covering all these retailers also and focusing around the growth of the key retailers who are interested in our products or who are working with our products. So somehow at this moment, I can say they are missed by the company, not missed by my team down the line, because down the line team is going, approaching to them. But we don't have proof that how much they have got or how much they are doing. But with IL360, we will be able to manage that also and we will be able to manage the high net worth farmer also. Because there are many farmers who are doing good work with us and who have good demand, but somehow we miss them. So to keep everybody in line, we have created this program and we have spent more than one and a half year on creating this program. And in another six months, I think it will be fully operational with all, with everybody, with the farmer, with the retailer and with the distributors, everybody. So should give us full advantage in this Kharif season itself. So yes, there is a focus, clear focus that we have to increase our penetration to the farmer, to the retailer, and to the distributor also. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that would be all for my side. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to join the question queue, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Yogesh Pandari from SOIC Research LLP. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So I just wanted to know margin profile of Maharatna products versus other branded products. Uh, Maharatna we divide into two parts, Focus Maharatna and Maharatnas. So Focus Maharatna has uh, grown very well this year. And uh, of course, uh, there is advantage because these are the key products which uh, have the potential to become the brand leaders in the markets. So yes, uh, we work around these and uh, of course these have decent gross margin generally more than 30 35 percent and uh, some maharatna products have this type of margin also and some in some in some maharatnas because of the twist of the season because the prices are fluctuated so much so at some particular time the margin may be a little lower but uh, as, uh, plus minus it is there okay second i wanted to know your top line guidance for the next year Guidance means I can only tell you that we are working on a very good path. So it's not the quarterly or the yearly performance what will matter, but we are creating the brand image. We are creating our reach, which is very, very important. So as Tractor Brand, we are providing the solutions. Definitely, there will be double-digit growth. What is difficult to say at the moment, because many factors will impact that, but we'll grow better than us. This much I can say. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to join the question queue, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Bharat Gupta from Fair Value Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Sandeep Ji. And, uh Sandeep Ji and Rajesh Ji, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, I'm not sure whether my questions are, have been answered because my line got disconnected. Uh, some of my questions are, Sir, can you highlight what has been the volume growth across our product verticals in this quarter and what has been the pricing impact? Uh, look, like the prices are uh, continuously under pressure 
and uh, uh, it's difficult to give the exact number, but I can say that on an average there might be impact of 10-12% actually on the price. So all this what has happened is the volume growth. So definitely there has been a decent double-digit volume growth already, which has happened in the nine months. And I see the similar thing happening in the second means in the fourth quarter also. So there will be volume growth around certain products which, which we are looking as the key products actually. So we will be working around all these products and uh, the things will be growing. Uh, so, sir, is it safe to say, like, uh, in the focus Maharatna and Maharatna product category, where we have grown by more than 14%, so the volume growth has been relatively similar, like, it, it has been more than 15 odd percent? Actually, particularly if I talk about focus Maharatnas, focus Maharatnas, we have grown by about 15%. In Maharatnas, the growth has not been that high, because some of the uh, Maharatnas have also got the hit, because we were focusing around the one dozen products which are in focus marathmas in particular. So the maximum growth has come from focus marathmas and we are working around the marathmas to get the volume growth also. So we have matched the volumes in marathmas but we have not done much growth in marathma alone. But focus marathmas there has been substantial jump. Right. So just wanted to understand further on same uh, since we are focusing more on the marathma product category and there has been good amount of growth in this. But still, uh, reflection of it on the margin seems to be missing. So, can you just highlight the gap which is there? And uh, particularly in the years to come, what kind of a margin profile are we guys looking at? Like, you have to understand that this was a very typical year where the high price inventory was there in the system. So, uh, we registered a loss in the Q4 of last year. But after that, we have made up actually. So I would say all the high price inventories are now gone and now the inventory is low price and you will see the profit growth also happening. So uh, this quarter, yes, we have jumped our profit by 30 odd percent, but I'll not call it a growth because the number is not huge. But for us, uh, Q2, uh, means uh, second half is not a big half actually in terms of performance of numbers. Uh, it will be positive. I can just, just give you assurance that Q4 also is going to be very positive much, much better than the past performances. Not, I'll not quote the last year, but even year before last also, it will be crossing, it will be better. And uh, yes, we, be, we are focusing around making more profitability, and that is one reason that we are focusing around the introduction of new products, doing the backward integration. This all is going to help us in profit. So I'll not be able to give you the exact numbers, but yes, uh, we will be the best of the industry players in the next two to three years. That is the vision, and we are working around that. Uh, so, talking about Q4, as you mentioned in your opening remarks, that it is majorly export driven, uh, where Q4 large. No, it's not only export, B2B, export, and uh, B2C, all three. So, I have to, uh, like, uh, uh, generally my B2C contribution is 75%, or brand business contribution is 75% in these uh, first three quarters. But when it comes to Q4, my brand contribution goes as little as 50% actually, and 50% are contributed by B2B and export. So that's why I said that it will be driven by these. So we were trailing behind in export, but I think our export numbers are also going to make up, and we should beat the last year performance in export also. Not by big numbers, but we will beat. In this difficult scenario, that is okay. But next year, what we could not achieve this year, we are going to do that actually. So I'm not going to announce the numbers of next year now, but yes, uh, I can say that uh, we are working and uh, we are very, very positive, very hopeful that our growth cycle will continue in the next fiscal also. Sir, uh, I was just coming on to it because 50% is primarily driven by exports and B2B. So just wanted to check, like, we will, we would have started building order books for the B2B business. So uh, how has been the demand trend? Primarily, I'm asking this question with respect to the technicals because in Chinese, uh, with respect to the dumping issues uh, which the industry is facing from the China and the inventory situation in the global market. So, uh, is there any kind of a pressure which we are witnessing in the B2B, B2B, B2B segments as well? Like, the prices are under pressure. So, definitely the industry as a whole is under pressure. But since we have our tariffs, exclusive tariffs, uh, why when I say exclusive? Because we are launching so many products and we are sharing our new focus Maharatnas also with many companies. So uh, that's why I'm very hopeful that despite of the circumstances being difficult, it should not impact the growth of IEL 
and we should grow reasonably, and we should continue that growth in Q4. And Q1 and Q2, which our generally uh, first half is a major half for us, we'll see the substantial growth in our performance. That I can say. Okay. Sir, a question on the margin trend as well, because we have expanded on the gross margin side. Uh, primarily, I think it's primarily driven by the change in the product mix, but there has been a 30% increase in the other expenses. So, Sandeep Ji, can you just highlight the reasons for the same? Boss, there is not a single reason uh, for this, as Rajesh has al already told you that we are working around digitization. So, there is a lot of uh, increase in the expense on digitization also, and the field promotion as we are are doing the new product, so a lot of uh, work need to be done uh, in the field also. So there is a uh, good amount of jump in field promotion also. So uh, and uh, the third major factor in the increase in uh, the other expenses is uh, power and fuel and uh, some uh, consumption of stores and spares. So these are the three major factors. So definitely uh, one. Uh, sir, I would. Work. Yeah. 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 So these are the two, three major factors because when you are working on the new product, so you have to work more on the field. So, so field promotion expenses and all these advertisement and traveling expenses uh, has increased significantly uh, during these first nine months. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, basic reason of increase in other expenses. And sir, can we see a similar trend in Q4 as well? Uh, I don't think so. It will be uh, such a huge one. Uh, because it's a low selling uh, quarter, so there can be some increase, but still the performance will be good. I that much I can say. Uh, there hasn't been any negative impact on the inventory uh, during the quarter, or we have taken any one offs uh, in this quarter? No. Okay. Uh, sir, as you mentioned, that there has been some pressure with respect to inventory position out there in the global market. Uh, can you just throw some lights uh, with respect to the Indian market as well? I know Rabi is about to close uh, and Kharif, uh, like you will be preparing for Kharif. So just wanted to check uh, a couple of things. One, with regard to the inventory situation. Uh, secondly, uh, like we were maintaining a 90-day inventory scheme. So uh, you would have started the procurement for the Kharif. In your assessment, like the price change of the RM, as you mentioned, it has stabilized. So uh, the price change are similar uh, in your view with respect to last year or there has been some sort of an increase which you are seeing? And any new products yeah. which you are about to launch in the Kharif? Uh, so these are the questions yeah. which I have. Okay. There is a big change which has happened in one year because last year the prices were declining mm -hmm. and now they are already apparently touched the bottom. So uh, there is no guarantee that the, uh, everything has bottomed out, but it looks that they are very much near the bottom because they are near all-time low. So this is a good buying time. So yes, we have already started making purchases for the Kharif season. We generally want to follow 90-90-90 cycle. But uh, yes, uh, a little more also might be possible at this time because the prices are lucrative, market condition is lucrative. China is doing every possibility to increase the prices because... Uh, uh, they have the Chinese New Year now and they are trying to shut down their plans for one month actually until the time of the Chinese conference which will be attended by a lot of people after a lot of time because during the COVID days nobody was going to China and the uh, uh, footfall was minimal. So if this year the footfall will be big and uh, the response is good then definitely the prices are going to increase in a big way actually. So, but since the international situation, as I have mentioned, particularly of Latin and America and Europe is still bad, so I don't think that there will be many fold increases, but there can be a 2 g rate type of 10, 15, 20 percent growth in the prices of certain products. It will depend on product to product and very difficult to predict actually, but still uh, there is a hope that there can be a price increase possible. So, as the price goes up, so uh, the demand also goes up, you know that. Because in the market, everybody wants to buy when the prices are increasing. So we are also waiting for that day when this uh, trigger will start. So expected that by the end of February, this phenomena is going to begin. Right. Uh, thanks, Rajeshi. Uh, these were my set of questions. Thank you. Uh, right. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Rohan Gupta from Nuwama World. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, good evening, Anson. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, sir, first question is on our uh, uh, Maharatna uh, doing very well, and you have mentioned that in the current quarter, definitely. I mean, it has reported roughly 14% kind of growth. Uh, just wanted to understand in terms of the margin pressure. Do you mention that roughly 30% plus gross margin for this kind of product category? Uh, it is only because of the some inventory led losses which we have to suffer in the current quarter or nine month that the margins are not reflective. And going forward, if that corrects, what kind of margin we are looking for uh, next year or so? I would say that step by step they are going to increase. And there should be a decent increase in the next fiscal. So we do expect that uh, we should go in by, um, I mean, I don't want to quote basically, but still, uh, there should be a good growth actually in the margins. And it should be visible from first quarter itself. That is my feeling. Uh, sir, any numbers, if you have done some any calculations, that kind of inventory losses uh, because of the high cost inventory, which we have incurred, in the current quarter or in nine months so? Uh, that's not my job. I have not done that calculation, but uh, I tried to keep the company positive because uh, it was a big hit when Q4 results were not reflecting my real performance. So I wanted to do, so I have worked hard and I have uh, uh, done the tail cutting, I have done the new product introduction. So the line, my line is very, very clear that I wish to do good products, provide new solutions to the market, and we have created brands out of it. So already my new launches are number two, number three in the market actually, and enjoying good image. This means they will ensure good profitability and good sustenance. So we are very, very clear that we are working in that direction. Definitely, there will be increasing the profitability by these products. This much I can say, Ron. Uh, sir, another is that uh, our uh, Maratnas have reported roughly 14, 15% kind of growth, while the overall growth for the quarter was flat. It means that the uh, uh, tail of the product have reported probably much sharper decline in revenue. So, just wanted to understand that it is a cautious strategy by the company to cut down the tail end of the products or low margin products, or it is just only that the pricing correction or the price drop in uh, tail product was much sharper. That's why they have degrown. Uh, no, it is the strategy of the company. Like, uh, we are working on a few dozen products which I wish to finish and take out of my range, actually. So, uh, there were 50, as I was 52 years back. So, continuously we are working and we are trying to finish these products. So, I think more than half are already finished and uh, the balance is also, uh, uh, like, uh, by this year end, we should finish about 75-80% of the product in totality, which we have targeted about one and one, one and a half year back. So, it's our strategy that we don't want to do certain products. And it is not only in the formulation, in technicals also. Half a dozen technicals I have stopped making, actually. And I'm trying to bring half a dozen new technologies. And uh, some of them we have already started manufacturing, and some of them we are on the verge of starting. And all these products will be in the market by April. Okay. Uh, sir, next question is on our... Uh... Uh, raw material procurement from China, and uh, uh, we were since we are also in a B2B business, and we manufacture some of the technicals by our own also, and sell into B2B category. So, uh, in the current scenario, with the with the significant pressure from China, uh, our procurement from China, how much it has increased in the current year, and uh, uh, how do you see if the Chinese, as you just indicated, the Chinese prices may go up? So, do we see some pickup? in our B2B business as well uh, going forward? Exact numbers will be given by the CFO. I don't uh, uh, have the numbers. But still, as a strategy, we are very clear that this year the it will not go up because uh, generally the prices are lower. And uh, the uh, import was higher, particularly for the generic products, the quantities were higher. But when it comes to focus Maratna, here the quantity is lower, the prices are higher, and value addition is more. So my investment as a whole in Chinese import should go down year on year as my strategy, as a company's philosophy, though exact number will be given by the CFO. But our purchases might be increasing for the Japanese products because a lot of uh, uh, intervention with Nissan is increasing because Nissan's product target this year, we should do a sale of about 400 crores and next year the target is more than 500 crore plus. So with Nissan, the portfolio towards Japan is going to bend a little more. 
So that is also part of our strategy, and that is the selling price I'm talking about, not the purchase price. So, uh, yes. With China, I don't think that we have a strategy to increase our imports. Our imports from China will be really in terms of volume also and in terms of value also. Okay, just last from my side. So roughly in nine months or 62% sales has been done from the Maratna sales product in the current year uh, on a turnover of close to uh, 15, uh, 1600, uh, I mean roughly 1700 crore. So uh, if we just compare these uh, product of 1700 crore, sir, uh, and roughly uh, 65% of that, 62% of that is coming from Maratna sales, it means we are talking about roughly as much as 1000 crore rupees plus coming from the Maharatna revenues. Uh, uh, what is that Maharatna sales revenue contribution we should be expecting next year? And, uh, I, I and this 30%... Uh, yes, please continue. And sir, this 30% gross margin in this Maharatna category, do we hold on or we should see some improvement in further on those Maharatna sales contributing to the gross margin? Okay. I'll reply it step by step. First of all, like uh, last year, our Maratna contribution was roughly, including focus Maratna, was roughly about 55%. Uh, this year, we have crossed 60%, and I think we'll maintain this 60% less type of growth. And next year, my vision will be to touch 65% out of Maratnas. So my vision is to take Maratna and focus Maratna to 70% actually. So uh, it will take two to three years of time. Uh, 55% is not possible every year, but still... My vision is to cross 65% next year, then to cross 70% also. So now, uh, yes, gold products are contributing roughly about 35%. So we will be bringing down these gold products. Some of the parts I might remove. Uh, we may focus more on focus Maratnas because a lot of new chemistries which are coming, they are going to enter into focus Maratnas and Maratna segment increasing the contribution of Maratnas. So that is going to be happening. So there is no reason to deduct the profitability, though the prices may that come down. But as the price comes down, the profit percentage is not going to come down. Actually. So there can be a possibility that profit percentage can remain same or it can uh, go higher also. So uh, we are not announcing the numbers for next year, but uh, I see decent growth in top line and also in bottom line in the next fiscal, actually. Because there won't be any reason of the, like... Uh, the inventory, the high price inventory, everything we were suffering this year. We won't be suffering next year. So I think our performance for Q1 and Q2 also itself should, should be speaking very high about what we are going to do in the next fiscal. Uh, so that's it for my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Bhavya Gandhi from the Lal and Roja Stockbroking. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, so just wanted to know the market opportunity for Nirog, which we've launched fungicide for sugarcane. Uh, any opportunity size if you can quantify? Uh, this is a biological segment. I'm very, very enthusiastic on my biological segment. So at the moment, the, our total sales which come from biological segment is really stagnant. About 40 crores plus minus we do every year, gross sales from biologicals. But I wish to grow these products in a big way. So Nirog is a new launch. So we have just did the test launch, actually, I would say. So Nirog might might be a few crore product, three, four, five crore product, actually, in the year to come. But uh, yes, uh, with our strategy of setting up IL Biologicals, which we are going to start uh, by the end of this year, actually, means uh, by, by March or early April, so, uh, I think our biological business is going to see a good jump, actually. So, uh, we will be focusing around biological. My vision is to touch 100 crores fast, but 100 crores reaching also might take one or two years, actually. So, I'm not saying that I multiply, but it, it should be good carrier in this segment. Got it. Nero, will be 3-5 crore product also next year, or will it be like a 5-10 crore product, and what would be the gross margins that we expect? Will it be like ma? Ratna category or focused Maharatna category? Uh, it will be like focused Maharatna. Margins is not a problem. The problem is the volume, the uh, building up of the volume. So we have to create an acceptance for the biological products and uh, uh, do a lot of field work to promote this product. So we'll be trying to promote this. So uh, 10 crores look very difficult actually in the short term. Long term there might be a possibility. 
that uh, at the moment we want to go subtle with this got it i don't want uh, to i mean the long term average gross margin is closer to 24 25% despite you know sort of our maratna products uh, contribution increasing to overall revenue our large long term average still uh, remains closer to 24 25% gross margin whereas you know i mean industry level i am seeing at least long term average i'm not talking about one year two year i'm talking about you know last 7 8 10 years because we've been uh, introduced introducing maratna since 2013 so i mean if you can throw some light i mean what is you know are we not backward integrated or are we not having some pricing power which is not allowing us to you know sort of have better gross margins i would say you know that should be market because the market scenario in covid the price is multiplied and after covid the prices fell and it is not only for agro chemical industry the pharmaceutical the chemical all the industries are seeing this so it is a cycle which industry is passing and in this cycle the margins have collapsed and before this we were trying to grow but covid was a difficult time where we had a strategically we were not growing we wanted to just maintain our sales during the covid time before that we were doing lot of expansions so we were incurring lot of uh, uh, investments regularly on r&d on manufacturing everything and everything was getting uh, subsidized or uh, uh, i would say everything was getting invested by the income we were making in our brand business actually or our btp business so that might have been the past but now like uh, we are debt free we have lot of funds we are growing in top line we will be growing in bottom line so we will be uh, like doing uh, performing much much better actually and as i already told in one of the comments that we will be meeting the uh, matching the best in 2 to 3 years of uh, time but uh, upfront i cannot say that in one year we will multiply yeah, or increase or that but yes uh, so i know that my gross margins are a little lower so we are working on that by product mix and working on everything uh, we are decently backward integrated we have around 150 reactors already 150 reactors are further added so we will have about roughly 300 reactors actually to manufacture the technicals and uh, doing the backward integration so that way uh, we i don't see a trouble so we are continuously working and we have stops uh, more than half a dozen technical i already said precise number is 8 i have stopped eight technicals and i am introducing six new technical actually for the domestic market this year and not this year in the, in these three four months actually so some of them are already introduced and many more are uh, in pipeline perfect perfect sir got it and sir i just wanted to know how many registrations do we have in india total number of registrations Difficult question. Actually, I don't count the registrations because it's a continuous job. I run four R&D centers. All the R&D centers are developing products, and the registration team is filing registrations. Patent team is working on patents. So it's a continuous process. We don't count that, frankly. So it's not important what number you have. It's important what direction you are moving. So we are trying to bring new AIs, which are a monopoly. we are trying to bring new patented products through our collaborations and then we are trying to protect these products which we are bringing by making the new formulations which are again ip protected so my vision is that i have to bring new solutions and i have to bring new ip protected solutions to the farmer so that the retailer also enjoys the dealer network also enjoys and the farmer or a consumer also gets the solution so the vision is very very clear that we have to bring solutions which are uh less competitors with uh, you have find less competition and which can be established as brands and created as brands so yes uh, the genetic products are under pressure otherwise also because there are international pressures also on these products and these are bound to go so we are trying to create new generation solutions in line what modi ji wants in line what europe wants and in line what is happening around the world Perfect, sir. Perfect. And just if you can uh, give us some guidance on the R and D spends for the next year, how much? How much would it be as a percentage of overall sales? Uh, let's not talk about the percentage, but we can give the exact number. CFO can talk about that. Well, we roughly spend about twelve to fifteen crores, I believe, somewhere in between, because major investment in R and D comes from Japan in the JV, and the uh, rest of the R and D centers are all in the plant. So we don't spend a lot. uh because they are uh, the major expense is taken over by the plant it is only the salaries which uh, and the uh, expense on chemicals which gets, gets covered in the r and d uh, expenses of ours because we don't focus 
on the expenses. We focus around the deliveries which the R&D center can give. So I don't want to show higher expenses or invest differently and create a different infra to, uh, just to show. I want the performance. So all the R&D centers are competing and giving the performances. So that is important in my dictionary. Perfect, sir. My last question is Isoxol, uh, that a new patented molecule. Uh, what is the opportunity size and have we started commercializing this? Uh, this is, uh, uh, I have not understood, this is, this is the JV product. So JV product will take another two years down the line to be launched. So data gen still under data generation, a lot of data generation is happening in Japan and a lot of data generation is also happening in India. We should be able to put our application somewhere in the end of this year. Perfect, perfect, sir. yeah. That's it from my end. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. So if the question two is clear, then I would like to say thanks to everyone. Thanks for part your participation. And I believe that I have tried to satisfy all your queries. If there will be anything, you can connect on mail or connect DCFO. Thank you very much. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Pallavi Deshpande. I'm sorry, the line for the current questionnaire, Pallavi Pandey, is this, Pandey, is this connected? Okay. We take the next question from the line of Kunal Tokas from Fair Value Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kunal, please. Okay, sir. Uh, it would be really helpful if you can share your growth vision for the next three years. Like, what are your aspirations for the top line and the bottom line? Like, um... I have already told you that we are working on bringing the new technologies. So these new technologies are going to come through Japan, through our Nissan, which is our key partner. And also I expect that I should be able to launch the OAT product, which we have developed together in OIL, our first uh, R&D-based products. So apart from this, our, uh, our own R&D centers, backward integrated, they are going to give certain technicals. And to protect these technicals, we, uh, we are going to come up with many mixtures which will be IP protected. So there will be, uh, you can consider that half a dozen launches on an average will be there every year. So with this type of launches happening and come the brands being created out of this, I expect that we should have a decent growth in terms of top line and a very decent growth in terms of bottom line. And that will be a regular exercise. So uh, it's difficult to give the numbers, but yes, there will be a decent growth, but decent double series growth every year. This much I can say. Okay. I understand your explanation, sir. Uh, my next question was uh, about any upcoming new launches you have uh, uh, lined up for the new, uh, for the upcoming Khari season? Yes, uh, there are a lot of launches. I already announced that we will be extending our herbicide, insecticide, and fungicide segments. And in all these segments, the new launches are going to come. So there is, uh, there are about half a dozen products which are lined up. So as we are preparing for the registrations, or uh, getting the registrations and other things, we launch these products. We are ready with the manufacturing uh, facilities. So everything is uh, uh, all is set, I can say that. Six new products, you said? Um, was that uh, six new products you said? Yeah, six new brands will be launching. So it's, uh, the brands are going to come from the new technicals majorly. Okay. And there might okay. be some launcher okay. also okay. along with that. Yeah. Got it, sir. And you also so talked about biologics? Uh, uh, yeah, biological is sorry, sorry. So biologicals also will be uh, launching certain products. So biological, let's not count big actually. Biological which takes its own time to... Uh, ramp up because we wish to take biological international also and in the domestic okay. market also I see a good scope from biological but this is going to go slowly at the moment even if it grows at 20-25% then also only in the adding 10 growth in first year and 15 growth in the second year so we are just at 40 growth at the moment so we will be increasing our biological segment also about the biological segment my question was that uh, there has been interest from a lot of players in the same segment as well. So do you think that the competitive intensity will increase when we start to ramp it up significantly? Uh, now, 
at this moment we are focusing around filing our patents. So we have filed a few patents in the biological segment. Uh, we also have made some mixtures, some new generation products, some other things. Uh, so some uh, progress we have made. So we are focusing around that. We'll shortly launch the new product. We start our launch actually. So as the launches come, we'll be working around training and product development. So it will take time. But yes, uh, I can just tell you that there is a big pipeline. And already we are focusing around the international markets, also with the biologicals. As we make a breakthrough, we make the announcement. All right. Got that, sir. Thank you. Those were my questions. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, as there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you very much for attending today's conference call. And for very relevant questions, I believe I have satisfied the queries. Uh, if there is any further query, you can connect to the CFO or through mail and uh, through Novama also. That's fine. Thank you very much.